I want to run down through the base options with respect to our main menu. Some of you may be interested in the graphics options or summer things. Plus, I have a few tips and tricks to give you. Of course, we have our career mode. And within the career mode, we have 20 save game slots. That is, of course, on PC. I'm not really sure how many slots are available on console. In the multiplayer mode, we have a join game, create game, and rent a dedicated server. We're going to have specific videos on all three of these topics coming later to our how-to playlist. Downloadable content. This is going to be where we can find our in-game mods from the mod menu. So we have category, gameplay, package, governance subsidy is is here day one everybody so we're going to be able to just install that by clicking on install and it's going to download and install it and then we do have a few other mods installed and dlcs installed that's why you're seeing the macdon pack so we have categories best most downloaded latest and recommended we have installed. We can see all of our installed mods. We have any mods that may need to be updated, any DLCs that may be installed, and then any additional extra content. Achievements. You don't just have to have Steam in order to have achievements. Giant's eShop version also has achievements. Looks like there are 45 here. And then under options, we have general settings and there are multiple languages. I don't know what most of these languages are, but I'll just go ahead and click through those real quick. So you can see all the different languages that Farming Simulator 25 by default comes equipped with. And we're just gonna leave it on English. We have also then the same language selection for multiplayer languages. Oh, I'll just put that back on English. Help input mode. This is what's going to be the F1 menu. It's going to tell us what keys to push. We have auto. We can give it only keyboard commands or we can give it gamepad commands or leave it on auto. If it's on auto, it's going to auto select and detect what we're using and then display the appropriate buttons based on what we are using at the time. Keypad and steering wheel support. We can enable that or disable it. When you load the game up for the very first time, it's going to basically say, hey, I detect a steering wheel or I detect a gamepad or I detect a controller. And it's going to ask you if you want to enable it. Head tracking is default to on. I'm going to turn it off. And for the keen eye to on you, you may have noticed that this error in the log, when I scrolled up there, that's related to track IR. I don't have track IR. So by turning that off, that should then quit trying to load track IR and get that error out of my log message. Force feedback, we're currently at 50%. That is the default. Invert Y look, the default is off. And then we have our sound options. Music volume, I think was set to 40% by default, but I have gone ahead and turned the sound off because typically the Farming Simulator 25 main menu music is under copyright and well, we don't need to have to deal with that. So you can see we have master volume, music, vehicle, environmental, Character volume, radio, GUI, game volume while not in focus, voice chat volume, voice chat or voice recording volume, and voice input mode, voice activity or off. I'm just going to turn it to off because when I'm in multiplayer, I use Discord and I just don't need to have the game audio coming through as chat because that's just going to duplicate audio for other players. As far as display settings, I'm using a 4070 Ti Super, and the default for me was Ultra, 1920 by 1080p. VSync is turned on with a frame rate limit of 60. Window mode is set to full screen. Resolution scaling is 100. Brightness of one and in-game HUD of 100. I typically change the in-game HUD down to 70%. I feel that it takes less, obviously, real estate and gives you more real estate to see and experience the game. As far as windowed mode, 
I like to run in Windowed mode because I like to be able to alt tab out of the game and not have the game minimized. Frame rate of 60% or 60 FPS. We have a choice of 90, 120, 144, 240, or 30. I'm going to leave it on 60 FPS because that is also what I record at. And then as far as Ultra, let's go into the graphic settings advanced menu and just see what Ultra is defaulted to. Object draw distance of 150, foliage draw distance of 180, LED distance of 150, terrain LED distance of 200, resolution scaling 3D, upscales or downscales game resolution, 100%, shader quality, very high, shading rate, very high, screen space, shading rate off, screen space reflections, high, screen space shadows is on, SSAO quality is set to low, Atmosphere quality is set to very high. Volumetric fog is set to ultra. Cloud shadows is set to on. Terrain quality, very high. Texture resolution, high. Texture filtering, ANISO 8X. Light quality, ultra. Lens flare quality, off. Shadow quality, very high. Shadow distance quality, high. Soft shadows, on. Shadow map filtering, High foliage shadows is turned on. Realistic beacon lights is set to off. If we turn this on, we're going to get reflected beacons. Field of view set to 60. Player first person field of view 60. Player third person field of view 40. Max shadow lights 7. Max mirrors 6. Max tire tracks 400. Max tessellation volume 185%. Multi-sampling anti-aliasing is off. Post-anti-aliasing is TAA. DLS is off. Fidelity Super Resolution 1 and 3 is also off, as well as frame generation. Intel XESS is set to off. Sharpness 1, DRS quality is off. And DRS target FPS is set to 60. But it is obviously great off because it is set to off. Under controls, these are going to be our keyboard default controls as well as our mouse controls. We can then scroll over and I have some additional accessories installed. So we have the side panel. I have the Extreme 3D Pro joystick. I have Thrustmaster. This is going to be my wheel, which is a T300RS. It's coming up as B66E here. And then I have the T500 shifter or basically the tha shifter and you can see here what all of the default options are available you can go in here at any point in time and change those if you want by simply clicking on it and then pushing the button that you want to have assigned and then it will basically pop up as far as then the device options well, this is something you're going to want to do if you have a wheel. So we have our side panel and we have our joystick. So up is SY1, down is SY, or S1Y, up and down. Left and right is SYX. And the joystick also has a twist, which is S1Z. And you may want to adjust the dead zone on these. We're just going to leave that here for now. But we're going to hit X to switch device. This is going to be our joystick. So SY up and down, left and right. Then we have our rotation. And what I want to change here is going to be for our wheel. So we have our steering wheel, which is axis one RX, and it has a huge dead zone by default of 14%. I'm going to put this down to 1%. And now my wheel is far, far more responsive. Now we have our accelerator, which is set to ACC. I'm going to change this back to 1%. Actually, we're going to set that to 2%. And our brake, well, BRK, right? We're going to set that to 2%. And then we have a clutch. And we're going to set that to 2% as well. We have our shifter. We're just going to leave our shifter in place. 
because it doesn't actually register on any of these axes. I'm going to move my mouse up to the max of 200%. And we are going to apply those options. Now let's come back over here to our display settings. And let's just quickly see what are our other options. We have very low, low, medium, high, very high, ultra. And then we had our max draw distance of 200%. Foliage distance max is 200%. Our LED distance is 200%. Terrain quality is set to 200%. 3D scaling, we're gonna leave that high. We're gonna leave most of these things where they are. I do need to go back and reference my field of view with respect to FS22, but I believe I had my field of view set to 70 on that. And as far as our DLSS, we have the option of off. If you have an NVIDIA, graphics card well you can turn dlss on you have performance balance quality ultra performance any card will work with amd fidelity super resolution because it is using a driver level option and then also the same option goes with respect to our intel graphics cards available here i by default would suggest not turning these on unless you need the help in order to obtain your target frame rate I'm also going to change this to 2560 by 1440 to fit the resolution of my monitor and what I want to be running as far as a game resolution. Of course, after you set the resolution, it's going to ask if you want to keep those settings. Just say yes before the timer runs out. And there we go. That is a quick run through of the various menu options that we have with respect to Farming Simulator 25. I plan to be putting out a video a little bit later on with respect to optimal graphic settings for lower end systems. I've not yet installed this on my test system, which is using AMD integrated graphics to see if Farming Simulator 25 will even run in any sort of acceptable quality mode. But if I can get it to run in acceptable quality mode, I will be putting out a video on that. I do have another system that has a 1070 Ti graphics card that's going to be on the lower end scale now of discrete graphics cards. So I'll also be trying various settings on that as time allows. So keep an eye on the channel. If you like this video, then please, by all means, go ahead and give it a like. And also go ahead and subscribe if you're not a subscriber, because we are going to be putting out a ton of useful how-to tips and tricks with respect to Farming Simulator 25 in the very near future. We're also going to be putting out map videos as well as, well, gameplay videos and live streams. Until next time, happy farming.